God. Glory to God. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Well, this is actually going to be our last one. I'm, oh, I'm really struggling because, you know why? Because I'm an even kind of person. <laughs> I like things to be in order. So it's got to go bam, 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 bam. And 11 seems a little off to me. I feel like I need to do another one. <laughs> Just to do 12. <laughs> so it's nice and even, you know, an even ending. You know, it's got to be even. But no, I, I promised I would get into intercession, and I only have three Wednesdays before uh, we go on vacation. So I, I want to get us started. I want to get us pumped, and I want to, to, to leave it to, uh, um, to, to those that are going to be speaking on Wednesday to, to have a, 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 a pumped crowd. And so uh, I, I thank you guys. I thank you guys for being here tonight. Uh, God's got... <laughs> Y'all are funny. <laughs> I know. God knows. He hears it. So, so this is going to be uh, self-control tonight. I know y'all have been waiting a long, long time on, on me ministering about self-control. Finally getting to that amazing place where uh, we all need to get to. But it wraps it up well. I love how God put it together like that, how he started with love and how he ended with self-control because everything in the fruit of the spirit is, is birthed by love. Everything, our joy, our peace, our patience, our kindness, everything is birthed by love. But guess what? If we don't have no self-control in all of this, it all goes out the door. We, are, we need both of them. We need to walk in love. We need to keep that love flowing in our life, but we have to have self-control. We have to be able to keep it together. Get it together. Get it together. You know, keep it, keep it tight so that, so that nobody can say or accuse you of being anything other than godly, anything other than what God has called us to do. So we're going to go through all the love anyway. We're going to go through all the fruit. And, uh, oh, I'm so used to grabbing my glasses here. <laughs> So the title of this message tonight is, It is the fruit that takes you to your destiny. Self-control. It's up to you. It's up to you. Actually, all of it's up to you. All of them are up to you. But self is not there for no reason. Okay? Self is there for a reason. It's not God control. It's self-control. Everything... Everything, or most people, they want God to do everything. They want God to um, rain down the money, even though they're not doing the things. They're not doing all those ifs. <laughs> they're not doing the ifs. And they want God to give them peace. They want God to give them the joy. They want God, God, God. God, why aren't you? supplying all of my need. Why aren't you doing this? You're God. I went to church a couple of times this month. I mean, I, you know, I have a Bible. Praise the Lord. All right. All right. I'm not going to tell, uh, you know, that's Pastor Tommy's line, put, put, pull in your religious toes. <laughs> all right. God has put all things into our hands to control especially ourselves. We have to learn that we are in control of our body and our mind and our emotions. We are in control of it. And, and, and so it's all our choice on what we're going to do. He's not going to intervene into our emotions and calm you down. He's not going to do that. You're going to have to do that all by yourself. <laughs> and he's not going to make decisions for us of integrity or excellence or love. He's not going to do any of that. We have to make the choice, the conscious choice, to decide, I am going to do this. <clears throat> I have to tell a story, just a little story, about yesterday. And it was a perfect self-control. It, be, it must have been 
sent by God <laughs> for me to do this uh, so that I can put this in this message tonight. For two weeks about, I have been hearing about this jam night. And I was so excited. Kelsey, if you could have seen me yesterday, you would have thought I was a little kid waiting to go to the park with daddy. I'm serious. I, I was just giddy and silly. I mean, I was working on stuff in my office, and uh, I went downstairs in Kids Point, and I started uh, uh, messing with stuff. <laughs> and then I got all busy, and oh my goodness, it's 6.15. Oh my goodness, it's 6.30. I got to go. I got to go. I got to get finished. And I ran upstairs, and I cut off my computer, and I started getting my stuff together, and I, I, I even texted Pastor Tommy and said, Pastor Tommy, I'm going to jam night. I'm going to go, go downstairs. So, and he says, have you eaten? <laughs> oh, I got to eat. <laughs> I don't want to eat. I want to sing. I want to worship. I want to praise God. I want to jump around and, and, and be able to sing with the, with the team. I, I, you know, uh, I used to, and I, I, I miss it, and I, and I love singing, and, and so it's just I don't get a chance to do it. And so I just said, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Well, I got down here, and nobody was here hardly, just a team. And so I was like, oh, hmm, okay. Well, Kelsey was practicing with, with, the, with his team, and, and, and so I, I was like, I want to sing. <laughs> I'm t seriously, it was almost like a little kid. I, I, I want to sing. And so I, I sat over there, and I waited, and he was, he was practicing and, and stuff like that. So finally, when he got finished with the song, it may have been five minutes or so, I, I, finally got, I, I raised my hand. I said, are we going to have jam night? He said, well, you know, nobody, nobody really showed up. I mean, uh, so I said, okay. I said, well, can I still sing with y'all? And um, he's, no, I said, can I still jam with y'all? And he said, yeah, you can get on the Congos. <laughs> he said, you can get a tambourine. <laughs> you can get on a tambourine. I'm a singer. I, I wanted a mic. I want, I want. <laughs> I'm serious. I wanted a mic. I wanted to. I wanted to sing with the singers. I wanted to. I wanted to blow. I wanted to have a good time, you know. And so, I, he don't realize it, but he hurt my feelings. I was like, I was like, no, seriously, Kelsey. I know you need to learn about women. I know you do, but, but, no, no, no. I don't mean it like that. Y'all stop saying that like that. No, I mean all men need to learn about women. Amen. All men need to learn about women and how they feel. <laughs> and so, 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 I, so when he said, I was like, no, I want, I, I want to get a mic or whatever. And no, I, I want to sing. I think I said, I'm a singer or something like that. And then, and so, he started singing another song. And so, he he start, he turned around, and I had to get, I had to practice self control because I'm like. Why is he ignoring me? I said, really, I, I want to sing. I'm thinking this in my mind. I didn't say it. I was thinking, really, I want to sing. And, and, and so, but I wasn't going to interfere. You know, there's like this fine line between pastoring and, and joining the group. And so I, I didn't want to do the pastor thing. I just wanted to be one of the gang for one night. <laughs> for one night. So remember that, Kelsey. And uh, sometimes the pastor hat goes off, and I just want to hang for just a second, for a little bit. And so, uh, so finally, I said, "Well, maybe he doesn't know I need a mic." So I get up and I, <laughs> so I stand up over there, and I'm looking at him, and so I'm like, "Don't you see me?" I mean, and so I'm, I'm practicing self-control because I'm ready to scream, "Hey, don't you see me?" And so. And, and then, uh, so he turns his back, <laughs> and he's playing, and he's just getting into it, and I'm like, oh, come on! My, I mean, I am, I, I'm almost out of control. I wanted to jump up and down like a little kid and say, give me a mic! I want to go sing! And so he, he uh, I said, forget it. I said, obviously, he's busy. They're practicing a new song. I said, let me, let me just go upstairs. I wanted to cry, though. I said, 
It was, it was just that bad. No, I was really looking forward to it, really. And, and, and I think I was just way too emotional. Uh, and so anyway, I, uh, uh, so I got my stuff, and I picked up my stuff, and, and I walked. I started to walk out. And then he came down, finally. He came down, and, and then he says, so what? You, you want me to get you a mic or whatever? I was like, no, that's okay. <laughs> You don't have to give me a mic. I'll, I'll be all right. You know, I, I, you know, I know y'all practicing a new song, and, and I think I might mess up the girls or whatever. You know, with them trying to get a get a get a thing. And so I finally left. But I went upstairs, and I was just so sad and so disappointed. And um, but God dealt with me this morning. You know, and He told me, and and He told me to ask Kelsey. You know, are you okay? Are you okay? Because I I can imagine He was here most of the day on, on, on Tuesday just preparing probably for this damn night. And I don't know if he was or not, but I figured maybe he was disappointed. And he don't want to hear me sing. <laughs> he wanted to hear everybody else. He's heard me sing before. I mean, he wanted to hear everybody else jam and, and, and see how many people would come out that night. And so I didn't know whether he was disappointed or not. But the point, the point is, is that I, I had a choice. I had a choice whether I was going to be very emotional, maybe embarrass him, embarrass myself, you know, and that's what happens. That's what the enemy tries to do. He tries to blow the whole situation way out of proportion and, until you, you know, everybody's mad, everybody's, everybody's angry, and, and it's a mess. It ends up being a mess. But I, I thank God for the Holy Spirit who just, you know, minister to me afterwards and, and just let me know that it wasn't even about that. Uh, it was, it was, it was to, to teach me that, you know, to, that I can, I can rein it in by my choice and not by what's dictating to me out there and screaming at me. It's screaming at me, you know, force your way or whatever, but the one thing I wanted to do is protect the anointing, not only in Kelsey, but in myself, in the whole situation, and so that it would just keep going, and, and they got a chance to practice and do their thing, and, um, and so it was good, but next time, Kelsey, acknowledge me, <laughs> give me a mic, so I can play for a little while, so I can come to the playground and play, you know, but anyway, but, but that's what it's about. You know, what I notice in the Bible is that there's a lot of people that made a lot of mistakes in the Bible. A lot of mistakes, and they did not practice self-control. Um, hey, right from the very beginning, Adam and Eve, right? I mean, Eve did not practice self-control. She looked at the apple, and she said, wow, that looks good. <laughs> hmm, it looks good enough to eat. <laughs> and she did. She did not practice self-control. And then he, he, Adam turned around and did the same thing. He realized the difference. He realized what he wasn't supposed to do, but yet he still did it and not, and not, and not take control over the situation. You know, um, Cain and Abel, man, they just went on down the line, didn't it? Ended up killing his brother. All because he was jealous. All because he couldn't control his emotions and couldn't control himself enough to realize that wasn't even about that. It was about their relationship was more important than that. And so he didn't care. His emotions got the most of him, and his, the control just went out the window, and he ended up killing his brother. Abraham. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what he was thinking. He, he let Sarah go into the king's <laughs> palace. What was he thinking? I mean, he, I mean he, that was his wife, and he was like, okay, you can have her. <laughs> I mean, really? I mean, so instead of, he, he, he allowed himself to get full of fear of, the, of, of what the king could do to him instead of protecting his wife and standing up in the face of fear and, and, and being godly, you know, and, and saying who sent him and, I mean, and being uh, a god man. <laughs> a God man. Um, he did it again with, uh, with Hagar. Self-control. I don't know how Hagar looked, but he said yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
He said yes. And those of you that don't know the story of Hagar, uh, <laughs> those of you who don't know the story of Hagar, well, you know, there's Sarah and Abraham. Well, Hagar was the maid. And uh, I guess they were getting a little impatient and couldn't practice some self-control and patience. And so they thought they were going to make this God thing happen, this air happen. And so Sarah, with her smart self, said, hey, why don't you get with Hagar, and then we can have a son. And uh, that wasn't self-control. That was just not smart. And, uh, and then Abraham said, yes. <laughs> that wasn't exactly very smart either. Moses and killing the Egypt, Egyptian. You know, he got angry, he got mad, and all of a sudden somebody died. And he had to run for his life and run out of, run out of Egypt. And he was in the desert for 40 years before God spoke to him again. 40 years before God spoke to him. All for a, a stupid out of control situation where somebody died. Um, hitting the rock, anger. He, he ended up not going to the promised land. All because he couldn't control his emotions and get it together. I tell you, self control is so important. It, I mean, whenever, just like I think about last night, that could have been so ugly. It could have been so bad. But yet, God, I mean, if we're not careful, we end up making the biggest mistake. And, and, and I don't know, I, I could have yelled or screamed, and Kelsey could have gotten mad and walked out the door, and we would have been without a praise and worship leader. Possibly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it wasn't worth that. It wasn't worth that, and, and never allow, making sure that he never gets wounded to the point that where somebody, a pastor, disappointed him or, or, or something like that. It's not worth it. It's only the enemy. It's only the enemy in our lives. There is an enemy, guys. There is a Satan. There is a devil that wants to mess with your life so much that he, want, he wants the, the plans of God to be totally ruined and, and so that... Uh, they will not come to full fruition in our lives. And, and, and self-control is paramount in us getting to our destiny. That's what our, that's, what our, uh, that's what our title is tonight. It's the fruit that takes us to our destiny, but it's up to us. Okay? David and Bathsheba. See how many examples? I could have kept going now. I could have kept going. There is a list and list and there's a long line, a list of, of, of men of God, women of God, that just didn't control themselves. And, but the consequences were so crazy and so terrible. Uh, Bathsheba, um, it ended up where their, fir their first son died because God moved away from him. He was, he was, he was displeased with his actions and what he did. And he says, I can't be where sin is. And, and, and David cried out to God, hoping that he'd change his mind. But no, it was a seed from, from, from deception and death. And it was, it was not to be changed or turned around. And, uh, but the consequences of an of a out-of-control situation can be very, very detrimental. And so be careful. Um, but let me tell you something. You cannot, you cannot do this alone. You cannot meditate yourself into this amazing state um, by saying good things. <laughs> it takes God in our life. And it takes a serious meditation upon the word of God that brings God on the scene in our lives, changes the very mind and transforms us into that image of Christ where our whole desire and our whole love is in him and not ourselves and not and it's or or it's not only just in him because his heart is for us so what he does is he transforms us so that we will love people 
and that our main goal is that others will get to know Jesus Christ. Okay? And the list goes on and on of examples that, lo that lost control of their lives and ended in the wrong place. Self-control controls the mind and the body to allow the fruit of the Spirit to be successful in every area of your life. If we don't have self-control, love, joy, peace, all those wonderful ones that, that come before self-control, uh, patience and kindness, goodness and faithfulness, gentleness will never work consistently. Yeah, they come out whenever we hit a trial, whenever we hit a problem and we run back to the Word of God. <laughs> How many of us do that? Oh, I ain't seen no hands. All right, y'all are perfect. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking to a perfect group. Yes, that's right. But... Uh, if we don't do this consistently, it ends up being little spurts of, of success. Little spurts of success. And, and then we go right back to whatever, whatever we were doing before. The spirit of a man is always willing. It's always willing because he is the one that's connected to God. But it must be consistently, uh, you must consistently feed the word to grow stronger and healthy. Healthy. Let's talk about self-discipline. Self-discipline. Self-discipline is the act of denying yourself. Controlling your impulses. Last night I denied myself singing. <laughs> An impulse to scream out and jump up and down and act like a two-year-old. Um, I had to control it <laughs> and put it together. Get it together. Get it together. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness. It helps us get it together. All those things help us to get it together. If we don't have these things flowing in our lives, we won't get it together. We'll be a mess. I, I love God that way. When we invite God to, to come into our lives, all of him comes in. All of him comes in. Not just a part of him, all of him. And when he does, he distributes all these amazing fruit. But it's up to us to develop it. It's up to us to water it with the word. It's up to us to bring the son of Jesus Christ onto that fruit so it can grow and develop and become amazing and become big in our lives so that we can share it with other people. Hey, I got a lemon, I got an orange, I got, I got all kinds of fruit to give you. Whole bunches. Discipline. Talk about self-discipline. What is dis discipline? Discipline is correction of bad patterns and habits, bad behavior. Correction. Sometimes correction comes in a spanking. I know that's very unpopular these days, but it worketh. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> it worketh. I'll tell you what. I know it worketh for me. I only needed one. One in my lifetime. I am not kidding. I've had one spanking, and that was enough. Keep the belt away from me. I don't want that. <laughs> Discipline is practicing self-control. Practicing it on a daily basis, because guess what? You're going to have all the opportunities you want in one day. In one day. Self-control, not to cuss out the guy at Walmart. <laughs> Self-control, not to run somebody off the road because he cut you off. And you know, and you know how you guys do. Vroom, vroom. I'm gonna run. I'm gonna come up. <laughs> I'm gonna come up next to him and give him the glare. I'm gonna give him the look. Oh yeah. Oh, I don't do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Prac 
practicing it. We got to practice self-control. Uh, and we'll have plenty of opportunities. Um, discipline, setting a pattern of good behavior and right choices. We have to set the pattern. Not just think about the pattern. We have to set it. We have to begin to start doing these things. Let's do them. It's our favorite thing, isn't it, isn't it Dave? <laughs> Disciple. Disciple is uh, also a derivative of discipline. Is it derivative? Uh, hey, I got that right. This is my word man over here, boy. I can, all I got is check in with him. Check the word. Ask Pastor Tommy. All right. Disciple. Disciple. The dictionary says someone that believes and helps to spread the doctrine of another. Disciple. Someone that believes and helps to spread the doctrine of another. This is my God definition of disciple. A disciplined one. One that has learned discipline and applies these things to their life. A disciplined one. Number two, one who follows and leads at the same time. One who follows and leads at the same time. You can do that, you know. Because a good follower is a good leader. One that knows how to humble himself under the mighty hand of God can be a great leader. A great leader. But takes great pleasure in learning while following in order to reach others. Amen. Takes great pleasure in learning while following in order to teach others. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a headache and it's not a, it's not a chore to be a follower. Amen. Number three is a teachable spirit and a humble heart to lead a multitude to great success. If God can trust you with a little bit, he'll make you ruler over much. But he's got to trust you with a little bit that he gives you, and then, if you will be faithful over the little, then you will have much. It doesn't say that, but I like it that way. That's the same thing. Same thing. Example, uh, I, I, uh, I remember hearing a story that Dr. Savell has said about Oral Roberts. He had called him up and he said, hey, I want you to come to Tulsa and I want you to come uh, to my house. Well, Tulsa is not a hop, skip, and a jump from Texas. Uh, but he, got, he, got, he got, got it together and he went and he was there the next day. And so he said, uh, yes, sir, you know, because he is a follower. He follows those through who faith and patience have obtained the promises of God. Amen. And so he went there and, and he thought that he was going to sit down and hear something that he wanted, you know, hear something that, you know, that, that the, the man of God had to say to him. And he said, sit down, sit down. He says, take your shoes off. Yeah, take your shoes off. That's real comfortable, right? Take your shoes off. Okay, um, tell me. What, do you, what have you learned about faith? I, I, I want to know what you have learned about faith. This man is, I know, at least 20 years, if not more, his senior. And yet, this man humbled himself and said, I want to learn what you know. I wanna, I, he, said, he told him, I am the hungriest man in the world to know about God. I want to be like that. I, I, I think about that and I go, wow, I, I don't care how, mu how many buildings we build. I don't care how many, how many churches we erect all over the nation and how many, how many, how many things and people we, we have opportunity to touch and, and all the different things. I want to be so humble that, that I want to be able to come to the, the, the newest member and say, 
what do you know about faith? Right, right. Teach me, teach me about faith. Teach me what it means to, 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 to believe God. What does that mean to you? And be able to listen and really absorb what they have to say. Because guess what? People have different things and different ways of looking at things. And I tell you what, you can learn something from anybody and everybody. Amen. If you're willing to listen and not be so full of yourself that nobody can tell you anything, nobody can impart into your life, nobody can say anything to you, and you learn nothing that way. Amen. But a baby can tell me something, and it'd be revelational. I'd be like, who told you that? God, God, we have to learn to be great followers, to be great leaders. Until we learn how to follow and learn and, and have great dis dis discipline, we will never be able to lead others successfully. One more time. I said, yes, I will. <laughs> Until we learn how to follow and learn and have great discipline, we will never be able to lead others successfully. It takes great discipline in our lives in order to really be successful. Amen. To learn how to, and, and guess what? The discipline doesn't come from another. It doesn't come from mom and daddy. It doesn't come from anybody. It comes from yourself. Amen. Learning through the word of God. God, teach me and show me what it means to be disciplined and to be a disciple of Christ. Amen. Let's turn to 2 Peter 1, 5 through 9. 2 Peter 1, a fruitful growth in faith. That's what my heading says, a fruitful growth in faith. 2 Peter 1, 5 through 9. It starts off, it says, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. To virtue, knowledge. To knowledge, self-control. To self-control, perseverance. To perseverance, goodness, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren, in other words, needing or lacking, nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things are short-sighted, even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. And that's something. It doesn't, I, I just copied that one. Can, can, <laughs> do y'all have 10? Can you go to 10? Praise God. I see, I see, I see. Praise God. Verse 10. The New King James Version. I know it's hard to add things on that. On the, is it there? All right. The prophets who told us this was, was coming asked a lot of questions about this gift of life God was preparing. Is that it? Second, second Peter. Oh, Second Peter. Second Peter. Uh oh, that means you got to go back in. <laughs> <laughs> Second Peter. I, I'm about to say, okay, Pastor Tommy, you might have to explain that one. <laughs> like, hmm. Therefore. Therefore. <laughs> there it is. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. You will never stumble. That was good, Pastor Tommy. That was good. 
Because if you do these things, you make your election sure. And your call in life. You do know God's calling you to something, right? He is indeed calling you to something. And that's our job to find out what that is. A lot of us know what it is, and some of us are running. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> interesting. Let's break down um, the different ones that were uh, in there. We're going to talk about faith really quick. The, there, is a, there is a progression there going on in 2 Peter 1, 5 through 9. There's a progression going on. And this is Christian Education Night, right? Yes. Okay, so we want to be educated. Yes. And uh, educated. Yes. We want to be educated tonight. Yes. We want to leave here with substance. We want to leave here with knowledge and understanding. And we want to be fully equipped, right? Yes. That's our job. Yes. As shepherds, that's our job to make sure that you are fully equipped yes. to be able to handle the wiles of the enemy. Okay? So faith. It says, add to your faith, which is total and complete confidence in what you know, even though you cannot physically see it. That's total and complete confidence in what you know, even though you cannot physically see it. Okay, because we're going to build upon that. We're going to build upon faith to virtue. Virtue is high moral excellence. Continual washing to purity, pure and untouched. Virtue. We're going to add to that faith, virtue, that purity, that washing of the water of the word to make us pure. Right? All right. We're adding to virtue what? Knowledge. Knowledge, Knowledge is truths and facts accumulated over a course of time. We must keep accumulating and acquiring. Acquiring minds want to know. Do you want to know? Whether you want to know or not, you must know. In order to be successful, you got to add to your virtue knowledge. Because the enemy loves it when we don't know what we're doing. And we have no knowledge of what we're supposed to do. He loves it when we come into, come into church and all we do is greet one another and have a really wonderful social time. He loves it when we come in and we, we, we come in here and leave here the same way we came in. Yeah. Totally confused and totally overwhelmed by life. He loves it. He loves it. Okay, we add to our knowledge what? Self-control. Do we have Bibles in front of us, guys? It's 2 Peter 1, 5 through 9. If, I, if I'm waiting, I'm fully expecting you to answer me, and it's okay to say something. It's okay. Self-control, control or restraint on oneself, emotions, and feelings. We're adding here. We're adding. We're, we're adding to our walk daily. Faith virtue, knowledge, self-control, and we add what? What's next after self-control? Nope. Perseverance. Perseverance. We add to self-control. Perseverance. Steady, persistent in a course of action. A purpose, a state especially in spite of difficulties, obstacles, and dis discouragement. We still persevere. We still move forward. We still press. It does not matter what comes in our life. It does not matter. Guess why? Because God is on your side. God is your source. God is the bigger one. He is the more powerful one. You are not alone. If we don't realize that, if we don't keep understanding that but guess what if you're not meditating the word every day it's going to catch up with you and you're going to feel the heaviness of life you're going to feel the disappointments you're going to feel all the obstacles you're going to feel discouraged 
stay in the word, persevere, persevere, press into the things of God. What do we add to perseverance? Godliness, godliness. Godliness is conforming to the laws or the word and wishes of God. Devout and pious, coming from God, divine. Devout or pious. I don't like pious too much. Sounds a little snooty. <laughs> That's snooty. But I mean, devout. I mean, devout is kind of serious. I mean, there's, there's a seriousness to this too. And there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a seriousness, seriousness where you become single minded. Well, you become so focused in on a word that, that you're not letting anything else in. Right. Wednesdays are very serious for me. And I, you know, I, I, I prepare for this. And I, I you know, and, and so I don't want anything in to my world on a Wednesday that is going to start stripping away from me. Yeah. And, and being able to give you the best of what God has and not just something where I, I got a little bit of this going on, a little bit of that going on. I got all this stuff going on, and it's dragging me away from God. Right. I don't want to do that. Yeah. So, that conforming to the, wor- to the word and the wishes of God. Godliness. You conform. We are conforming. At, what do we add to go- godliness? Brotherly kindness. Brotherly kindness. Loving all. Loving all. Oh, as if they were family. Okay, maybe some of us don't like our family. Okay. Pretend. (laughs) Or some of us. (laughs) Some of us, man, will go to the ends of the earth for our family. And we'll do whatever it takes. We should do that for all men. Come on. All men. All men. I don't care how, how, how... Annoying they are. I don't care how, how oh, that gets on your nerves and hurts you. And do whatever, whatever, whatever. You go to the ends of the earth for your brother, your sister. Because that's what we're supposed to do. And you'll want to. When we, when we, are, when we are filled with the word of God, we want to. We want to. It's like, what can I do for you? What can I do for you? Add the brotherly kindness What? We came right back around. I love it. I love it. Didn't you see that in the word? I tell you, if you study the word, you will see that kind of stuff in the word. You will. Take some time and look up these words. I I took some time today and yesterday, and I looked up these words. And I was like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, God. And I'm just getting, de- I'm getting deeper and deeper and deeper, and, 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 and it's just getting gooder and gooder and gooder. It was mine first, I think. No, it wasn't. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> we share. We share. <laughs> We've been sharing for almost 33 years. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. Love. A profoundly tender Passionate affection for another person. Wow. A profoundly tender, passionate affection for another person. And, and, and we're not talking about sexual. I mean, it's something deep with inside your heart. It's something deep within you that cries out and wants to do something greater for, for somebody else other than yourself. And that's God. That's the God on the inside of you. And if we don't ever practice these things, if we don't ever do these things, uh, we're missing out on the best part of God, on the best part. He wants to show off inside of you. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things are short-sighted, is short-sighted, even to blindness. Sometimes we're fooling ourselves, thinking we are so okay. 
and we're not. There is, there's so much more room for more of God. Amen. There's so much more room to get better, to go deeper, yeah. to learn more about how amazing and wonderful he is, and to do more for people that are around us. And has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Wow. You're still cleansed. You're just a mess. But guess what? You can come right back into the fold again. You just got to run back to the word. Let's go. Okay, let's build up this fruit again. Let me get it together. Get it together. So that I can be the best I can be for God. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 9, 26 and 27. 1 Corinthians 9. I want you to follow along with me so I know that you know the word, that you're following in the word. This is Christian Education Night. We're learning something, right? Yes, we're getting better, more equipped. We're doing it for Jesus. 1 Corinthians 9. 26 through 27. Therefore, I run thus, not with uncertainty, thus I fight. Not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it, it into subjection, least when I have preached to others, I myself should become a disqualified. Hmm. See, that's what I do. I read it and I meditate. I read it and I think about it. I think about it. Hmm. What do you mean by that, God? What do you mean? And guess what? If you really ask, he'll tell you. But I'm telling you, you better have a pen and piece of paper because he's got a lot to say. Especially if you didn't spend no time with him in a while. He's got a lot to say. So, it says, I run, not with uncertainty, I fight. Not as one that beats in the air, but I discipline my body. You have to discipline your body. You have to discipline your emotions. You have to discipline your mind to decide that I am not going to just be drug around like a, a rag doll because my emotions are getting the best of me. Or circumstances are getting the best of me. It's causing me to worry. It's causing me to cry out and not cry out to God, but I'm crying out just because I'm crying. Stop crying. Get in the word and let God show you his plan because he has a plan to get you out. He already did it through Jesus Christ, but there is still a plan. There's a plan that is strategically for you, but you got to stop and hear what the commander and the father of all heaven has for you to do. He might tell you, I want you to go down there. I want you to do this. I want you to do that. And you better be obedient. But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection. You got to bring these thoughts into the obedience of Christ. I cast the well, casting down imaginations and every high thing that will exalt itself against what? The knowledge of God, it has the nerve to come up into my mind and tell me that God is not going to supply all of my need. It has the nerve to come into my life, come into my mind and say that I'm sick and I'm going to die. It has the audacity to come up in my mind and say that my children are going to be out in the street and, they, and they're going to run wild and they're never going to come to God? That's a lie. Amen. So I bring that thought into the obedience of Christ Jesus, the word of God, 
And I, I, I just I bring my body in. And I make sure that the word of God is the first and final authority. It is what comes out of my mouth. Not that, yeah, they always get in trouble. Man, I, I you know, they're no good. They're just no good. Don't say it. We're going to talk about that mouth right now. <laughs> Let's turn to James 3. James 3. It is quite an interesting chapter. So we decided to, God and myself, decided to read the whole thing. <laughs> the whole thing. The whole thing. And that's your homework tonight as well. <laughs> I know y'all learned a lot about love. I know you did. I'm not even going to ask, because I know every hand will shoot up that you read 1 Corinthians 13, the whole chapter. And not that you read it before, but you read it freshly last week. And you let God give you a fresh revelation of our love walk and what we should look like. Okay? All right. James 3, the Message Bible. It's the fun one. It's the fun translation. I mean, it's home. I mean, it's kind of like, eh. Okay. James 3, the subtitle says, when you open your mouth. <laughs> when you open your mouth. Oh, my. Don't be in any rush to become a teacher, my friends. Teaching is highly responsible work. Teachers are held to the strictest standards, and none of us is perfectly qualified. We get it wrong nearly every time we open our mouths. That's where that self-control comes in. As teachers, we better have self-control very, you know, very, 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 that's where that perseverance and <laughs> that pressing comes in. That diligence to be in the word because that mouth, oh my, it gets us in trouble all the time. Yes? If you could find someone whose speech was perfectly true, you'd have a perfect person in perfect control of life. A bit in the mouth of a horse controls the whole horse. And a small rudder on a huge ship in the hands of a skilled captain sets a course in the face of the strongest winds. I had to look that up. I had to look and see what a rudder looked like. And considering the size of the ship, that rudder is small. And yet it controls the whole ship. I'm getting ready to get on the ship. I expect that rudder to work. <laughs> and the captain. <laughs> Amen. Skillful captain. Amen. And then I had to look up a bit. I don't, I don't ride horses, so I don't know what a bit looks like. Interesting. I mean, it's just a little thing in his mouth. And you just, you just attach the little straps. And it just does this to the horse, and the horse just knows where to go. And you pull back on it, and he stops, and you, you turn it, and he knows where to go. And I'm like, wow. I want you to remember, though, okay, you don't want a bit in your mouth. You want a bit, I mean, not by the devil, okay? You don't want the enemy to put a bit in your mouth, okay? Because you don't want him to lead you around like that and tell you what to say, how to say it, and be destroying everything that you come across. Because that's, that's how he can get. Where am I? A word out of your mouth may seem of no account, but it can accomplish nearly anything or destroy it. Wow, that's powerful. If all, it only takes a spark, remember, to set off a forest fire. A careless or wrongly placed word out of your mouth can do that. By our speech, we can ruin the world. 
turn harmony to chaos and throw mud on a reputation. Send the whole world up in smoke and go up in smoke with it. Smoke right from the pit of hell. Wow. That's pretty powerful. That's pretty tight, isn't it? Because let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. God made your speech and the words out of your mouth just as powerful as his. He made you in the very image of God and to be able to speak a thing and it come to pass. That's why God is very careful with his words and what he says. Because he knows all he has to do is say a word and it's done. Guess what? You say a word and it's done. You say you broke, guess what? You're going to be broke. You say, I'm a millionaire. Keep saying it. It's coming. It's coming. But you can't say billionaire today and say I'm broke tomorrow. Can't do it. Can't say I don't know where I'm going to get the money. I don't know how this is going to happen. I am so confused. Get in the word. The word has the answer to everything. He wrote the letter to us to tell us what to do when we need it. It only tell no. Okay, wait a minute. Okay. This, this is scary. I like how you said that. This is scary, even though we ain't scared. We are not scared. We have no fear, right? No fear. Because God, if you got fear, you don't have faith, okay? But this is the way the man said it. This is scary. You can tame a tiger. Wow. But you can't tame a tongue. It's never been done. Uh, the only person that can tame a tongue is you. And even then, it's difficult. Even then, we have to guard it every day. Put a guard about our mouth every day, every day, every moment of the day. It's like, okay, what am I going to say? How am I going to react to that? How am I going to say that? Pastor Tommy and I have a, have a ongoing, uh, we, we guard each other. So if I say something, he'll go, oh, oh, so that's what you believe? Right. He'll be like, oh. Okay, no, I don't believe that. Nope, I, am, I, I know exactly what I need to do. I have the wisdom of God, and I'm going to be able to accomplish this at a high level in Jesus' name. So, yeah. So it's good to have a partner. It's good to have somebody that can watch you for you. <laughs> uh, with our tongue, we bless God. Oh, wait a minute. I, I missed one. Uh, tiger, and we can tame the tongue. It's never been done, and the tongue runs wild. A one-tongue killer. <laughs> I love this guy. And with our tongues, we bless God, our Father. And with the same tongue, we curse the very men and women he made in his image. Man, I learned a long time ago, stop talking about people. Stop talking about people. It does not benefit absolutely nothing. It benefits nothing. It only destroys and tears down, and that is not our cause. Our cause is to edify and to build. It is not to tear down. As a Christian, as a disciple, as a disciplined one, we have to learn to discipline our mouths so that we bring forth and edify and uh, bring forth much fruit. Um, with our tongues, we bless God. Yes. Uh, we know. Curses and blessing out of the same mouth. Wow. My friends, this can't go on. A spring does not gush fresh, fresh water one day and brackish the next, does it? Apple trees don't bear strawberries, do they? Raspberry bushes don't bear apples, do they? You're not going to dip into a polluted mud hole and get a cup of clear, cool water, are you? Do you want to be counted wise? Yes. To build a reputation for wisdom? Yes. 
here's what you do. Live well. Live wisely. Live humbly. It's the way you live, not the way you talk that counts. Mean-spirited ambition isn't wisdom. Boasting that you are wise isn't wisdom. Twisting the truth to make yourselves sound wise isn't wisdom. It's the furthest thing from wisdom. It's animal, cunning, devilish, conniving. <laughs> Whenever you're trying to look better than others <laughs> and get the better of others, things fall apart. And everyone ends up at the other's throats. Real wisdom, God's wisdom, begins with a holy life. Holiness seems to have gone out the window. You know, I tell you, amen, amen, because we're bringing holiness back to the front. You know, it's okay to be good. What happened to holy? There's a difference. There's a difference between good and holy. Holy is when you're in the presence of God. And you are, you are acting and imitating the one on high and the father of all, and you are transformed into his image. Being good, you can do A lot of people are good. But there's a difference in being holy. Totally different. Okay. <laughs> Real wisdom, God's wisdom, begins with a holy life and is characterized by getting along with others. Hallelujah. It is gentle and reasonable, overflowing with mercy and blessings, not hot one day and cold the next, not two-faced. You can develop a healthy, robust community that lives right with God and enjoys its results only if you do the hard work of getting along with each other, treating each other with dignity and honor. Come on. It takes work. This doesn't just drop into your lap and drop into your spirits and say, ooh, I got it. And you just live out the rest of your life. This takes work every day. Just like I said, you're going to have the opportunity, if not tonight, uh, tomorrow to see if you're going to have some self-control over your mouth. That's the big one. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Uh, whether you're going to have self-control over your emotions, over your, over your patience, over your love walk, over your, over your kindness, all of it, all of it. It sums it up. Do things God's way. How is that? Pursue him each and every day, and he will show you the way, his way of doing things purely and right. Amen. Well, that self-control... Praise God. And I tell you, um, one thing I can promise to you, if you begin to really pursue the word of God and decide within yourself, I want to know God. And not only do I want to know him, but I want to be just like him. I want to be like my father. And that's what Jesus said. That was Jesus' whole mantra the whole time he was here. He just kept saying, I do what the Father tells me to do. I go where the Father tells me to go. I, you know, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Because he had decided within himself, I want to be just like you, Daddy. I don't want to go my own way. I don't want to do my own thing. I want to look just like you. I want to keep it in control. I want to keep it tight. I want, to, I, want to, I want to make sure that I'm hearing your voice and that I'm doing the things that are pleasing before you and you alone. Men can't, you can't please men and please God. That's right. You can't do it. Don't try. Don't try. Because if you please God, you'll, you, well, no, you won't please men. But I mean, but you'll please some men. But it doesn't really matter. Because when it's all said and done, they don't do nothing for me. They, they do nothing for me. They may give me a paycheck, and even then, God can give money to me any kind of way, any kind of how. It's just not about that. You know, stop trying to please people and please God 
And the only way to please God is to know what God likes, to, go, to know what God loves, and love the things that God loves, and hate the things that God hates. And, and I tell you, you'll be pleasing before the Father. You'll be pleasing before him. And uh, learn to mount a guard about your mouth, and keep him close at all times. And he promises he'll take good, good care of you. And, uh, and you'll be successful. Are y'all ready for uh, learning some more about intercession? Yes. All right. We're going we're gonna to get, get into some deep water, some really deep water when it comes to intercession. How, may, um, how many of you, I just got to ask this question. How many of you have your prayer language? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Oh, this is going to be fun. Because <laughs> we got to get everybody praying in, in their prayer language and, and, uh, and uh, learning what that is and why that's so very, very vitally important. So if you don't know and you don't, you don't know yet what that is all about and you've heard some really, really bad things about it, we're going we're gonna to get that straight. Amen. We're going to get that straight. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, 